On my travels throughout Canada, I meet all sorts of people living in all different kinds of rigs. This guy's name is Bruce, and this one here is gonna show you that you don't need big, fancy, and expensive to be out there enjoying van life. He bought this thing for a thousand bucks and kept it super, super simple. Chevy Express 2500 and it's been a trooper for the time I've owned it for sure. <laughs> Come check it out. Awesome. So everything is it, is it, is it okay there? <laughs> <laughs> everything on this van is completely bare bones basic. As you see it, it's basically how I bought it. A thousand dollars special off of Marketplace. Some would say that's not a good idea. I disagree. It's got me from Newfoundland to BC and back to Alberta a couple, well, twice. <laughs> so yeah, it's been pretty good. Everything opens except this door, which is taped shut or ratchet strap shut. I'm not too sure. <laughs> At this point, it's a little bit of everything. The transmission's right a little there. slippy. The motor has better days. I think it's on its second one now, but it's holding together. When I seen you when you had your bare bones van, it definitely inspired me because at the time I was living in a big 26 foot RV which had everything and I started looking at it like, why do I need all of this space? It's all empty. How long were you in the RV for? Uh, I was probably in the RV for again a year. Most of my vehicles ended up lasting, lasting about a year. This one I'm hoping to build it and keep it going to last longer depending on how much. So what's the, what's it been like parking this van compared to having the RV? Oh, a dream. Honestly, I would literally pull up in random parking lots, not even trying to sleep, and people would come up to me and say, oh, you're not allowed to sleep in here tonight, and it's like, I'm just I'm just parking to grab a coffee. Like, you know, oh, really? it, was, it was kind of annoying here. It was just like an instant judgment. Yeah, yeah. instant judgment. Uh, with the van, you don't get it so much unless someone kind of sees you peeking in from the back, like yeah. jumping in and in the back and in the front. But other than that, like it's completely stealth. Like I've actually slept in a Tim Hortons parking lot. <laughs> no one's bothered me. You just, again, I take your advice, sleep late, wake up early. No one's there to bother. Kind of keep it cool, keep it calm. So this is my coolest tub. I usually grab it from the inside when you're changing before shower, just showering at the gas station, truck stops and stuff like that for now. And when I go to cook, I just have the good old single burner. Frying pans and such all down here. And in a tight situation, we have the good portable shower. <laughs> have you used the portable shower yet? Yeah, we have actually back in Newfoundland is where we got it. And we started using it back there because there wasn't many truck stop gas stations with showers in them like at all. So we ended up having to grab this thing, and it's been it's been really good, really good. Uh, I have a little sink in here, baseball gloves, stuff like that. I keep my food in the other tub underneath my tools. I should actually switch that around. It's not a smart idea. I always have to keep lifting my tools, but it's a learning process, and it's quite enjoyable. I can't see me ever living any other lifestyle. So yeah, th this is my van. Um, Everything in it has kind of a little story to it. This used to be the bed that was across here because I had a temporary bed built like the one that you were describing and your beginning van build. And it has now turned into a buck jump <laughs> because I had nothing else to do with the wood. <laughs> nice. This chair is from an alleyway we picked up. My girlfriend at the time seen it and absolutely loved it. So it just kind of stuck around. This is the wheel bearing I fixed last, yeah, like three days ago, I believe. And the army cot came from my father actually for a birthday gift because he just knows I'm a hippie and crazy and I always need a bed somewhere in random spots. <laughs> the chair underneath, the folding chair came from my friend Brendan in Newfoundland and he said I just needed to take it. <laughs> so yeah, it's been a good bed. Uh, 
Like I said, my father gave it to me because I'm kind of a hippie and he always knew I needed to sleep in random spots. And this is fold away, easy pick up. You can put it to the side if you need to. Uh, clears my bike pretty good for now until I can figure out something else to do with it. I have my clothes, oh, sorry, clothes, tools, miscellaneous, and then food. Big old generator for when I get tools, power tools again. Uh, the fishing rods again are from my father when I went down to Newfoundland to visit him. Uh, I didn't have a fishing rod at the time and fishing's big back there so he ended up hooking me up with a couple and they've been pretty good. The mattress is from when the bed was here so I'm kind of just hanging on to it until I build another bed for him. Um, the garbage can I literally bought because I've seen you talking about it and it <laughs> is the best thing. It is great. Fun. I just kept knocking it off my wall slamming the doors. Um, the good old poop bucket again from one of your videos. <laughs> but that's the local blue. Definitely a good recommendation. At night, there's not much open, so it definitely comes in handy. Not that you want to use it, but it comes. Did in your handy. Did your lid break on it yet? No, not yet. Oh not man, yet. I've, I've been trying to keep it pretty. I broke good. two of them already. Did you? Oh. Yeah. So I have a question. So you've been in here for one full year. Mm-hmm. With no insulation on the walls. No insulation. Where did you spend the winter? Well, when I bought the van, it was winter, so I'm coming up on my second winter there now. Um, yeah, it was minus 40 in Calgary when I bought it. The van didn't start, I actually had to get it towed to a friend's, work on it before I can get it started, and then start living in it. So it was like, yeah, it was a pretty tight situation. But once I got it started, I knew minus 40, no insulation, there's no way you're going to survive. I'd have to, I had to idle a van for like three days straight just to keep the heat in and so you had, you had no heater no heater just a van heater yeah. just kind of and a propane tank heater but that emits so much moisture that we had that's the reason the woods up here because we had so much moisture dropping on our heads we'd wake up and it was like a shower yeah it's because of propane heater and once we put this up it kind of blocked all the drips it might still drip but i'll get to that during the yeah what, what was the condensation like on the walls it was not bad but it wasn't good either i think the roof took it was worse on the it. roof yeah i usually kept the windows down about so much even at minus 40 so you had to really crank it and the side doors the reason the second side door doesn't open is because the hinge is so bad that if i open it it might just fall off <laughs> so i got it ratchet strapped in and i had to tape up the gap because it was such a big gap in between the door and minus 40 i tell you the heat wanted to escape from there and it was like a ice all down that whole that whole gap of the door it was pretty bad so we just decided you know what can't do this we gotta go to bc so we went out to bc and we spent the most of our winter there until it started to warm up a bit and then we traveled down to newfoundland and spent about three or four months down there with my father and decided you know what we just we love alberta bc area so much that we got to come back and decided we're driving back up so with a thousand dollar van the only maintenance mind you is spark plugs and an oil change we made it all that distance and I am still kicking it to this day. <laughs> You're building the van out though? Yes, I am definitely building it out this summer. Well, just with the rest of the summer I have, I'm gonna try to jam in insulation, a bed, the cabinets and stuff might come during the winter, but as if I wanna get insulated and at least a heater in this thing for the winter, I'm not doing minus 40 again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. Yeah. So with having your van build be so simple, how many times did you rearrange your van over that last year? Oh my God, it, it, everything has been every different op like way. Right now I have access to the back because it's easier to get the bike out. And when I go to build, I'm gonna be putting plywood underneath the bed to store it for now. But for now, this is the rear access. I'm hoping to have the bed kind of like what you have on yours and then kind of make it into a couch. I have a full drawing plan thing, but it'll eventually it'll come. It'll come in time. Not everything comes overnight. We all don't have $10,000 for a sprinter van. <laughs> so we do the bare basics and do what we can. And I think the sign on the dash basically says it all for my life. <laughs> so your former bed, AKA the bike ramp, that was crossways before. Yes, it was just, I had the tubs actually underneath my bed and you can still see the holes, the big holes from the screws that held up the main <laughs> frame. Cause it was kind of like a floating bed. There was no holes. It was just straight into the wall from one side to the other. So the great big van life debate, bed crossways in the back or bed lengthwise? Which do you prefer now that you've had both? 
I got to say, I, li I like sideways because it's so much easier to, it's just easier, so much more room. I mean, with the cot, I can kind of put it either way. I just have it this way to get the access for the bike, but preferred bed style, I got to say, definitely sideways leaves way more room for building side to inside. side in the back. Definitely. Yeah. It leaves way more room for building at the inside. That's the same problem I had because when I started with my mountain bike, I had an issue with trying to get it in there. So I tried the bed this way and I didn't like it that way. Yeah. Cause like, yeah, cause like, like you said, when you put the bed this way, you lose living space, mm -hmm. you like movability. Definitely. Like most times during the day, I'll unfold my bed and just put it up against the wall just so I can get in and out a lot, a lot easier. If I need to cook inside, if I'm in like a really busy neighborhood or something, then it just gives me access for that. Don't like to do it, but it happens. It's not just van life. So do you want to give us a walkthrough on where you plan on building cabinets? What you plan on doing in this build coming up? Do you have an idea? I kind of do, yeah. Just kind of basically a little bit of the setup of yours, but more of I want a couch back here because since I've had the rear access, I really like in sitting here and just enjoying views of Calgary or up in the mountains and whatnot. So I think having the back access, like a couch would be really nice. A lot of people do the couch inside. I don't really spend a lot of time like in the van back here unless I'm sleeping. So opening the doors and just having the fresh air is nice. So all my van build, since I've lived in it, now having it every way like i mean i've literally slept up here this way <laughs> every which way you can think about sleeping in a van on the floor on an air mattress i've done it so i kind of got the idea of how i want my van build i definitely want the bed at the back and cooking possibly at one of the doors so i'm hoping the kitchen have the kitchen right about here as a counter so when i open the side door your kitchen's underneath all your spices and stuff the single burner and all of that and over here is mainly gonna be for power and clothes and seasonal stuff for just storage. Under the bed, I have a lot of tools into a tub and I plan on getting more. So that's basically gonna be the toolbox is under the bed. And eventually one day a roof rack to hold the mountain bike so I can get it out of here <laughs> as much as I enjoy it. So do you have any quick tips for anybody getting into van life right now? Uh, honestly, take a step-by-step -step guide from Chrome and live in your van, feel it out. I thought that I would want my van built out completely different when I started. Now living in it so many different ways, I have I have a straight vision on how I wanna build it. There's not gonna be a four and five part build series. It's just gonna be one, one and done. I know what I want now. It's definitely a great experience living in an open van so you can get the idea of what you want. So if you were to build out the van originally when you bought it, do you think you'd be still living in that same one now without living in it simple for a while and knowing your space better? I gotta say no, because I kind of did that with my RV and it wasn't what I wanted as soon as I was basically done building it and I ended up selling it for a restart. So with this one, I definitely wanted to feel it out, make sure I'm building it the way I wanted it the first time so I don't have to keep redoing it. So parking between the RV and this you said the van's clearly better? Oh, different world, different world. I can guarantee like, even with all the stuff you have on your van, it's definitely still a lot stealthier than a 26 foot RV. And yeah, so I, I, I just made a video the other day that's probably already come out by the time this van tour comes out, saying that the van doesn't need to look stealth, you just need to be stealth in it. So people shouldn't see you living in your van. Your van can say, I live in my van all across the outside of it. But if nobody sees you living in it, that's my opinion on what stealth is. I don't think a van needs to look it on the outside. Absolutely, absolutely. The more, the less they see you being an inconvenience in their parking lot, the, oh, that's le right. the that's less right. they're gonna bother you as well. If they just think you're there parked, you don't know. They could, you could be on the phone having a coffee, waiting for a friend. You never know. I don't think too many people are gonna bother you. But if you're out and you have your awning out on the side of the road, they're definitely gonna <laughs> come by and give you some help. <laughs> So now that uh, you're in this thing, how many knocks have you had on the side of your van? I gotta say three from security guys, but it was literally because I, my fault. I parked in the wrong spot. I shouldn't have stayed there as long as I did. The sign right in front of me three times said, no parking from this hour to this hour. Should really get up on military time. <laughs> <laughs> Funny you say that. I'm the same way. I driving through intersections. I'm like, what does that mean? Yeah. I pull over here to the parking sign over there. I'm like, what time is that? Yeah, I want to make a turn. I'm not trying to do math. <laughs> Switch out the signs. <laughs> right? Come on, man. <laughs> That's hilarious. You said that the first time I seen that was in Manitoba. Yeah. 
Um, do you have any social media they can follow you at? Uh, I would like to say so, but I keep forgetting passwords and I'm not very good with <laughs> phones. So if you see me, you see me. If not, then, well, this is where you'll see me. <laughs> Living the van life. Awesome, Matt. Thanks for showing us your home. Um, not very often I barge in on a uh, on a van tour, but <laughs> while I was filming that shot, he brought up the subject of a sink. <laughs> that the sinks are like cups, and it's true. Most van life sinks are like a cup, and he just said the best thing I've ever heard. The best thing ever. Why would you put a cup in your van to wash a cup? Is that how you word it? Yeah. Like, you're kind of just washing your cup in a cup. <laughs> That's it. And an unnecessary water pump when you can get a hand one to just... Right? You know, like, things go bad. Especially if you're dailying everything. Have it as basic as possible so nothing goes wrong. I got real up windows. I've never had an issue with my window going up and down. See, and I have a problem with my roll-up window. Because people come to my passenger side, they're like, Chrome! Chrome! I'm like... <laughs> yeah, let me reach over. You gotta reach over and do it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, anyway, man, much appreciated, bro. I appreciate it. You bet. Get it out. That's like 10 horsepower. <laughs> Wicked, man. Looks good.